Town Council regular meeting. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councilors Bordelon. Here. Baumgartner. Here. Franco. Here. Heed. Here. Melendez. Here. Obrey. Councilor Obrey. She is here. She was talking. Yeah, she is. Park. Councilor Parker. Here. And Councilor Zapiri is, at, is not here yet. So you have you have eight, to, which is more than a quorum. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you lead us in a salute to the flag, please? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States. States of America, America. and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Recognitions, awards, and memorials. Uh, we have none this evening. Uh, we are on to Roman numeral four, public hearings. And what's gonna happen is um, Madam Clerk will read the call to public hearing and then Mr. Reiner will give us a very brief overview as to the purpose of the public hearing this evening. So Madam Clerk, please. Eight, uh, Town of Groton notice of public hearing, April 7th, 2020. Notice is hereby given that pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 7-163E, a public hearing will be held by the Town Council of the Town of Groton, Connecticut on April 7th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. In the community room, uh, one at the Groton Town Hall Annex, 134 Groton Long Point Road, Road, Groton, Connecticut, to receive comments on the proposal to sell the William Seeley School property. This was dated at two, uh, on, on March 23rd, 2020, and also at, on April 1st. It's required to run twice in the newspaper, which it did. John Reiner is on the line and uh, has a couple of comments to kick off, if that's okay. Yes, please. Mr. Reiner, if you could give us a brief overview as to the purpose of this public hearing this evening, please. Sure. John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development Services. Good evening. So as the town clerk mentioned, consistent with Section 7-163E, all town properties that are valued over $10,000, the town has to hold a public hearing on the sale of the property. It, it does not have to do with the proposed use of the property. It's more for the purpose of the fact that the town is going to be selling the property itself. The town does have a very uh, standardized process that we take all of our development proposals through for the sale of properties. Uh, I can give a very brief overview of how we do that, if that would be helpful. Yes, please. So for our development processes, the first thing that we do once the council uh, has directed the town staff that we want to market the property as excess for future development. We market the property for many months in print, at trade shows, social media, web pages, uh, and issue it out to industry experts and developers. We then issue an RFP uh, for at least 60 days. The re RFP requires a concept and site plan to show the fiscal ability for a project, the developer's track record, the ability of the developer to complete the project in a timely manner, estimated total project cost and offering to the town, abatements if requested, and does not require bids on items like demolition, uh, but generally a rough, a rough cost estimate for something like a demolition and even a rough, rough cost estimate for what the project is expected to cost with projected tax revenues. Then we receive those proposals. We put together an interview committee, which usually is comprised of both staff as well as members of the town council. The interview committee meets and reviews the proposals. We then select a certain number of proposals that will then have actual interviews with those responsive bidders. We'll usually have a second round of interviews with some of the finalists. We'll then have a final interview with what we usually take as the preferred developer. The interview committee will then meet again and make a recommendation to the town council for a preferred developer. Hello. Oh, we can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, Hello? So, oh. uh, 
Leanne, we can hear you now. Can you hear us? Would you like me to continue? Yes, please. Okay, sorry. Uh, then when the uh, interview committee makes a recommendation on the preferred developer status, the preferred developer selection criteria usually includes looking at can the you proposed hear me now? use. Yes. Yes. Turn your volume up. Okay. Uh, the developer experience, the financial benefit to Groton, financing, ability to execute, now. and the schedule. Um, the town council then generally meets with staff and the interview committee in executive session. The town council will then meet with the preferred developer in executive session. Staff and the development team create an option and or purchase and sales agreement once the town council meets with that preferred developer and direct staff to move forward. At that time, the price is negotiated, any final financial incentives are negotiated, and any contingency plans. Uh, the development team, the actual developer, may hold a public meeting outside of town council meetings. The development team would then present with staff to the town council in a public forum their plans with some type of an option agreement. And if the development agreement or option agreement is approved, the developer then begins their due diligence. The developer would then present a revised site plan to the town council prior to any regulatory submissions. The developer would then go through our normal planning and zoning and other regulatory processes. And once the regulatory processes are approved, the developer would generally purchase the property and close on the property. Are there any questions about the purpose of the public hearing or the process that we take uh, in marketing and uh, selling these properties? Any counselors have any comments or questions for Mr. Reiner? Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Reiner. Uh, Mr. Burt, I'm going to let you handle recognizing um, the people that uh, have signed up to speak with us this evening. Sure. I, I would just like to make sure Councillor Obrey can hear at this point. Um, Councillor Obrey, thumbs up if you can hear us. Councillor Obrey, can you hear us? I could. Uh, Put her on try to put her on my speaker on my phone if you would like so she could participate that way do you want me to try that um sure looks like she's troubleshooting yeah i think she's trying to, go to, to, to trying continue on bear with us please for those of you listening at home technology is great Okay, don't, uh, let's see if this works, okay? No, oh, I think it's gonna be reverb. No, it's not, this isn't gonna work either. You don't, you don't see, um, okay, okay, good. Well, you can, okay. Well, I think we're gonna have to continue on. Um, so I will, <clears throat> first on the list is Mr. Suarez. Mr. Suarez, I'm getting ready to, okay. Mr. Suarez, he just needs to unmute. He's been allowed to talk. Okay, there he goes. Mr. Suarez, okay. if you could please just state your name and address for the record and you have five minutes to speak, sir. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Town Manager for putting on this tonight. Uh, John Suarez, 166 Grove Avenue, Broughton, Connecticut. Um, I went to the initial meeting um, for this again uh, this year, the meeting in the year, was in February. Um, and I apologize for the background if you can hear that. Um, I really, my main concern about this is the size, of the size and scope of the project, one, and two, possible traffic issues on Walker Hill Road and Grove Avenue and Fairview Avenue, which is below Grove Avenue. Uh, Grove Avenue connects to under the Gold Star Bridge. Um, two, I'm also concerned about the future. Who's gonna be taking over this? Uh, who's gonna be the um, site manager or the uh, apartment manager, if you will? And are they gonna keep it, upkeep it, or is it going to decline? 
like so many of the uh, big, big uh, establishments around here that seem to, they start off nice and they seem to decline. But uh, that's what I have for tonight. Um, thank you for providing me with the uh, way to talk to you folks. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Suarez. We appreciate you calling in and being with us this evening. Mr. Bird, who do we have next? You're muted. Next up is Mr. Uh, Thomas Potter. I'm about to hit allow to talk. He sh you should be able to mute now, Mr. Potter. Good He's evening, on. Mr. Potter. Thank you for joining us. Please state your name and address for the record, and then you'll have five minutes, sir. My name is Thomas W. Potter. I live at 154 Walker Hill Road in Groton, Connecticut. You have two uh, comments, email comments from me concerning this proposed project. Tonight, I would use my time to pose maybe three questions. One to Mr. Burt, one to Mr. Reiner, and one to Councillor Franco. The question that I have for Mr. Burt is whether or not the town has requested a current estimate from Public Works for the demolition and restoration of the William Seeley School Building. I don't want him to respond now because that would eat into my time. I would also ask whether or not the proposed agreement to sell this 14 acres to Donmar Corporation for a dollar represents what I would call an arm's length transaction. Uh, Mr. Burt may not be able to answer that specifically, however, Councillor Obrey could probably help him out because she has uh, immense experience in the real estate matters and she could probably explain what I mean by the arm length concept. In terms of another question, I would ask Mr. Reiner, who was uh, good enough to send me a copy of the proposed demolition and restoration estimate that Donmar obtained from a company called Standard Demolition Services Incorporated. It's dated March 7th, 2019. It's addressed to Donmar Companies and it concerns the former William Seeley property and they make a base bid of $2,099,235. Uh, my question is, was this specific amount ever disclosed to members of the town council? Because I find no reference to this specific amount in any of the minutes of the meetings of either the town council or the town council committee of the whole. My second question concerning this specific uh, proposal from Standard Demolition Services is it listed under paragraph C a number of exclusions and actually there are 14 exclusions and I'm wondering if you might explain to me what the word exclusion means. I asked that question of a representative from Donbar and they told me it was standard industry practice. Well, that doesn't really tell me anything. Uh, my third question would be to Councillor Franco. Did you know of the base bid submitted by Standard Demolition Services when you made comments, I believe, uh, last month during a town council or town council committee of the whole meeting, where you more or less surmised, I think that's the term you used, that the demolition and restoration would be substantial and that in effect represented the justification for the $1 selling price of 14 acres of town-owned property. I, I guess I need to know whether or not you understood exactly what the town was basing that $1 selling price on. I have no more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Potter. Mr. Bird, who's next on the list to speak? Just one second, please. Um, Lynn Gall is next, and I am going Okay, she has been enabled to speak. She just needs to unmute. Thank you. Ms. Gall, if you could please just provide your name and address for the record. You have five minutes to speak. Thank you. 
Sure, this is Lynn Gall. I'm at 35 Bolivin Street in Groton. I'm off Grove Avenue. Um, I came to the meeting, I think it was back in February. I uh, saw the site plans. Um, I am concerned about the traffic on Grove Avenue since I live off of that and I live in that uh, little neighborhood that we like to keep together. Um, obviously with everything going on today, we see a lot of people walking. So there's a lot more foot traffic in our neighborhood. I'm also concerned about that coming from this site. Um, I did walk through the area because uh, I was interested in um, the 14 acres. Uh, the plans that we, you know, that I had looked at on the board looked like if that is what they do would be beneficial, but I do have also the same concerns of who will maintain the property once it's all built. Um, that, you know, and, and also the traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gall. Mr. Bird, who is up next? Yeah. Uh, Gretchen Ciparini, and give me one moment, please. Certainly. Concerned about the traffic on Grove Avenue since I live off of that and I live in that uh, little. Okay, Gretchen Chiparini has been enabled. Like oh. Good evening, Ms. Chiparini. If you could please state your name and address for the record. And then. I want to ask something before we start the phone. Uh, I wrote up a thing. Can you put that one second, please? I'm hearing another person speaking. I do too. I love background noise. It's uh, Gretchen's background. I think she's playing it in the background. It's coming from Gretchen's I background. I have no background. The plans that we, you know, that I had looked at on the board looked like oh, yeah. hearing the last conversation. Can you, can you um, mute Leanne? You know, is that what it is? Also the same concerns of who. That's not me. Got it. Okay, we're set. Okay, uh, Ms. Ciparini. Well, I was please. told yesterday by uh, Lisa that we can submit and we can speak, but it's That's very correct. Confused. That's correct. You can submit written comments if you'd like to do so after you're speaking tonight. That's perfectly fine. Okay. If you could just state your name and address for the record, then we'll start the timer, please. Thank okay. you. Chipperini, 87 Phoenix Drive. We don't have a normal public meeting at a time. Why don't we have another normal public meeting at a time when citizens are not under extreme stress about catching a deadly virus, being stuck in a house with a bunch of irritated kids, and worrying about paying bills and for food with money we may not have next week? Why should anyone care if a public meeting on the William Seeley property gets discussed at this very inconvenient time or two or two, three months from now when our citizens will have less worries on their plate? It's all very fishy to me. Why does our highly paid economic development staff think that apartments are the key to pulling Groton out of its extreme economic deterioration? We already have thousands of apartments which have not stopped the deterioration. And in fact, they have been a contributor to it. Why does the staff think that having dogs in an apartment does not double the deterioration rate of an apartment? Why does the staff think that single bedroom apartments will not become loaded with children cramped into small pay spaces to save money for their parents who are going to be pressured by the difficult times that we'd be having ahead of us? Why does the staff think that the William Sillies property is put to its highest and best use with a Harvard Johnson style apartment complex with long depressing hallways and facing the highway in an amphitheater U shape that is the ideal layout to amplify the noise coming off the bridge every time a truck comes down the hill of the bridge and grinds its gears while shifting. I lived there for 20 years, so I, I do know. Why does the staff think they are, any upscale rental will be attracted to a place that looks like a 1960s Howard Johnson's motel or barracks, whatever your heart desires to call it, that is a bunch of boxes that has not one interesting architectural fe feature? My God, Belford Beatery is better looking. Why does the staff think that a developer says window dressing things like a pool, dog walk, and meeting room is, is just mentioned as a marketing buzzword to get staff and thus this council to buy into it? Why does the staff think that a Howard Johnson style building at the gateway to our town will be an iconic symbol of our town to help attract more investment when the property has great potential with all utilities, including natural gas, three phase power, a river view, an incredible on off egress, and I 90 fell will achieve this? Why does our staff think that Mystic, with two pu no public utilities, no highway e egress, and no view, is a better place to put a fake mixed use project with 700 apartments? when the William Silly School property is far more suited for this type of project. By the way, calling that a mixed use project is just a fake name to get 700 units into Mystic. 
why does staff not come into action when one word of the uh, Kamoin report that we put $150,000 for into, uh, and, and it does not suggest any apartments for a solution for our future group. Why are we completely abandoning the Kamoin report? Why does our staff think naming a project Triton after a Cold War Raider picket surface ship have anything to do with Groton's heritage as a submarine building town? I'm sure that name gives uh, renter, upscale renters a warm and fuzzy feel. Why did John Reiner lie to every citizen multiple times who attended the zone change meeting for the William Silly School property in 2017 from residential to commercial? I'm forwarding to you these lies and in, in what I'm just told you I was going to give you. Why did, and you can listen to it, I suggest you do. Why did Reiner say multiple times that he is working with me and meeting with me every two days when no such events ever took place? I wish uh, John Warner would apply these creative abilities to economic development rather than creating these cobwebs of lies. Why did our town manager, John Burt, who attended that meeting, allow Reiner to say these lies and continue with the unfilled promises which this Darmar junk is? Why is Liner Reiner constantly feeling- Ms. Ciparini, please be more respectful. Well, he is a liar. He is a liar, Mayor. Why is Liar Reiner constantly feeding this council lies that I want some exorbitant price for my adjacent property and that I refuse to speak with Donmar while they continue to never call me. And when they and their lawyer told me at the introductory meeting and you were there, Mayor, that they would call me. Why does this District 8 and 1 that I grew up in have to be destroyed in value and quality of life for decades for the short term greed of our two leaders, Don Ryder and John Burt? Why does our mayor, Patrice Granitowski, not understand the difference between an integrated project with a main street, several roundabouts, and a lot of character with, and two projects built on two separate smaller acreage properties at two different elevations? No you have mayor. One minute, ma'am. Okay, no mayor. Granit Darren Talsey, one plus one definitely is not equal to three in that scenario. It probably does not e even equal one. Why is this town staff and the town council so ignorantly and blindly determined to continue to destroy our town piece by piece in a short period of time by pushing to have two incompetent, zero experienced builders with extreme long term, heavily impacting projects that everyone knows will only cause further harm to our prospects for any real recovery? and even more so in light of the impact that COVID-19 will have. Thank you. Mr. Burt, uh, do you have any other speakers that are on the line? If not, we'll go to, I believe um, the clerk has something she was gonna read for the public hearing, or is that for citizens petitions, Madam Clerk? This is for public hearing. Mr. Burt, do you have anyone else? No one else live, no. Thank you, Madam Clerk, please. Okay, this is from Robert Bailey, 179 Mich Michigan Drive. Uh, request William City School not be sold off for development. Long uh, living residents paid for and still living there. Open space has been dictated to destruction of more open space with new bigger school building projects to consume more open space without, without replacement of open space. Please understand that this that's left from prior school projects long ago should be returned to open space because it hurts the long-term residents overall morale, their place and way of life. They paid into all, all along the way to have their investment turned against them is unfair. Residents do feel obsoleted. It's ele elementary to give them priority first before ever taking anything away from them with the staff in a master plan going forward. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Do you have another from um, Representative Fortner or is that for the citizens' uh, petitions? Um, that Representative Fortner's, um, oh, I, I thought you were gonna read that, but I certainly can open that. Um, is it for this or for the citizens' petitions? It was for this, for, uh, for William Seeley. Um, do you have it handy? Yep, I do. Um, so let's see, um, I don't have her address handy, but I'll get that for the record. Uh, Cynthia Fortner, to the members of the town council and planning department, I attended the informational meeting of the William Seeley uh, development on February 19th, 2020. I was encouraged to hear that the developers stated that they are looking to build an apartment complex with a diverse population and sense of community. With that goal in mind, I would like to encourage a discussion about affordable housing. Affordable housing 
known as AH, is not low income housing. AH is for earners, earnings up to 80% of the local median income. Teachers, EMTs, law enforcement officers, as well as young professionals might all qualify for AH. Uh, according to February 17th, 2020 editorial in the day, in order to retrain young professionals and achieve long-term economic stability, more affordable housing is needed throughout the region. In California, affordable housing units are mixed seemingly uh, into developments. This encourages diversity as well as a sense of community. I believe that the town of Groton should promote development models to include diverse and, and affordable options. This allows young and old from many different professions to form a community together. Sincerely, Cindy Fortner, Groton RTM. Hey, okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Burt, do you have any other um, people? I just wanted to make sure before we close out the public hearing. Sure, and I, just to mention, Mr. Potter had uh, submitted two letters to the council, which they all have, as well as they'll be part of the minutes. So people, uh, so the public can see they're actually on our website already. Uh, we received an email from Linda Gaudet from 160 Walker Hill Road asking to postpone the hearing. Um, one second, please. Certainly. Uh, email from Nancy Kenyon, 14 Hamilton Avenue, um, opposed to the project. John's uh, email from John Scott, uh, 674 Cow Hill Road in support of the project. The Conservation Commission submitted a letter in support of the project, so they would like to see the open space uh, protected as permanent for the public. Any remaining public, any remaining open space from the development. Um, email from Gretchen Gauthier uh, uh, in support of the project, and an email from Laura Cato uh, asking uh, for postponement due to some concerns over the project. That's what I. Have. And just to remind the council, the public hearing was really about selling the property. The actual Don Mar agreement will be later in the agenda. John Reiner will be speaking at that point, and some of what he says may answer some questions. Thank you, Mr. Burt. Um, I believe that's everyone that has signed up to speak and all the correspondence that we received. So at this point, it is 7.01. We will close the public hearing. Thank you very much. We are on to Roman numeral five which is receipt of citizens petitions, comments and concerns. And again, I'm gonna to go to Mr. Burt to see who he has. I believe we have at least one person that signed up in advance to speak, Mr. Burt. Yes, we have Mr. Potter again. He's the only one signed up. I'm hitting, Mr. Potter, you should be okay to unmute now. Thank you, Mr. Potter. If you could please just one more time, give your name and address for the record. Thank you, sir. You have five minutes. Thomas W. Potter, 154. Walker Hill Road in Groton, Connecticut. I understand that the town of Groton has three other school properties that are in some stage of uh, being put up for consideration for sale. Uh, concerning the William Seeley project, I asked John Reiner in a Freedom of Information Act request uh, for information that was prepared by the selection committee when Goman, G-O-M-A-N, and York, Y-O-R-K, were selected as the marketing consultants for the Seely School Project. I was informed that there were no documents available to substantiate my request. And I'm a little confused by that because I recall in Mr. Reiner's uh, discussion earlier this evening, that that seems to be a very distinct part of the deliberative process. So I'm asking uh, Mr. Reiner and perhaps Mr. Burt to explain just exactly where we are concerning the other three school properties uh, in terms of the marketing consultant, if they've been selected, if there's been an RFP submitted, uh, if there have been responses, if there have been interviews by a selection committee, uh, just in so many words, I want to know exactly what the status is on those three other school properties. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Uh, Mr. Burt, we have no one else signed up to speak? We do not. Very good. Okay, so we are on to Roman numeral six, response to citizens' petitions, comments, and concerns. Okay. 
Okay. So I had a quick question. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Should, one should, second, we, please. should we open up the floor? Councilor Bordelon? Usually at the end of our meetings, we open up the floor. If anybody who didn't sign up would like to speak, they are allowed to speak. That is not what we do. Well, you mean just yeah. we have no one else online, though. Everyone oh, we don't, I just want to make sure that no one else is being yeah. no one's a, No one else is Thank online. You. Councilor Bumgardner, you wanted to speak? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I'd just like to thank uh, Mr. Potter for um, uh, voicing his concerns regarding uh, the project. Um, a, and also, I, I'd like to um, just clarify one comment made by the manager with respect to um, a letter written from uh, by uh, Laura and Thomas Cotto. Um, while they did express concerns, um, you know, they, they implored the council to postpone the public hearing. Um, they, she did share some concerns uh, about the loss of um, safe places for, for school for young children to play on. Uh, as many folks know, uh, the William Sealy School property is um, uh, used as pretty much as an open space, recreational space um, by uh, many folks in the community, but most especially from by folks in the neighborhood. Um, so there is a uh, significant amount of concerns regarding that. Um, and I, I do hope uh, the council also considers that uh, as we, you know, um, consider uh, selling the property. Um, and uh, that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Baumgartner. Councilor um, Heed, please. Uh, yes, just a couple of points to respond. Um, the first speaker um, asked who would be managing the properties uh, after Donmar uh, completes the construction. My understanding is that Donmar intends to manage the property. Uh, and keep it. Um, and then in terms of the traffic, uh, the traffic study hasn't yet been um, hasn't yet been been conducted, but the expectation from what I understand is it's it should be a handful of cars every 15 to 30 minutes on the average. Um, but if you uh, if, if we reach the target audience that intends to that'll be working at EB, for example, there should be a shuttle van that'll be running down and, and it'll help them avoid um, not only traffic, but the parking issues down uh, at EB that will likely get a little bit worse. Um, obviously, uh, for traffic out onto Walker Hill Road, it would be better if we could access directly onto Route 12, uh, but that's not an option right now. Um, so that's all. I just wanted to make sure that was out there. Thank you, Councillor Heed. Councillor Franco? Thank you. I am... Um... I have read all the letters that were sent to me and I understand people's concerns. And the same as with some of the other properties, I think this is a presentation that was brought to our community. Um, it's an opportunity for us to have economic development. What we're trying to do, well, at least I'm trying to do it because I can only speak for myself in a responsible way and to also meet the needs of our community. Um, I think as this is the preferred developer and this is the option agreement. This is not a final sale, meaning that this is going to happen. This is only one of many steps that are happening in, with this project. Um, the community will have other opportunities, I'm sure, to speak to the developers and there will be um, zoning hearings and other such um, opportunities to speak as well. So this is not the final step. This is the very early stages and beginning part of it. Um, so I don't want people to think that just because um, we're gonna vote on this tonight and possibly go forward with the, um, the option agreement that that means it's, it's final and it's done. There's many more steps involved. And um, as I was um, specifically asked a question by Mr. Potter, I believe that later in our presentation uh, or later in the agenda, when we get to that topic, that this will be something that will be discussed as um, I have had uh, conversations regarding this topic this past week. So that will be covered, I believe, when we get to that um, part of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Franco. I'm not seeing any other hands. So we will move on to the next item, which is um, Roman numeral seven. And this is the consent calendar. And I'm gonna go in the order where we normally sit. So Councillor Bumgardner, would you move the consent calendar, please? 
Yes, I'll make a motion to move uh, to move the consent calendar. Is there a second? Second, Franco. Moved by Baumgartner and seconded by Franco. That's I um, thank you for giving your name when you're seconding. That's very helpful. Um, is there any discussion on the items on the consent calendar? Um, I have um, Councilor Obrey had asked that we note who we have received contributions from. So I'm going to run through the list here. Um, these are all special trust fund contributions. Thank you to Lee Vincent, Bob Stachin, Samantha Tramontana, Tramontana, excuse me, Elizabeth Hogan, Joellen Anderson, Dan Cahill, Shea Cahill, Stephen and Marcia Dietrich, Puppies Behind Bars, Robert and Linda Ashworth, Lee Vincent and Bonnie Wardell. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. We are currently at seven counselors as Councillor Obrey had an issue with her connection. So that was moved seven in favor, zero opposed, zero abstentions. Mr. Burke, could you try to get Councillor Obrey back online, please? All right, we are on to communications and reports. Oh, I was gonna to go to Mr. Burt first on this, I apologize. Um, in light of the public health emergency, which is why we are here the way we are this evening, um, I just wanted Mr. Burt to give us all an update on um, where the town stands, what we're doing and any news, just to kind of keep the public informed and to reassure um, that they are working on your behalf. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Burt for that and then we'll go to counselors, please, thank you. Sure. Um, in terms of uh, what the town's doing uh, related to COVID, uh, you probably saw out there today, we closed down uh, town tennis courts, basketball courts, volleyball courts, uh, playgrounds, hockey rink, skate park, trying to, because we were getting a lot of congregating and it's an action other towns were taking. Uh, so we did that today. Um, at this point, we have, uh, hold on one sec. Um, This time we have uh, 13 positive cases in the town, including the four in the city. Um, the town is, a, is open by appointment only um, with the intent of people doing absolutely necessary paperwork, uh, you know, uh, permits, that type of thing in and out as quick as possible. Um, we are working with uh, Physician One Urgent Care. We're looking at working with them to uh, do throughout the town mobile screening and testing where if you had insurance, um, you would go through through them, they, they would screen you to see if you're likely to have uh, COVID-19 and then um, uh, then they would come and do a remote test. Uh, they think they can do up to 200 a day. I actually did send this information on to the Lawrence uh, Memorial Hospital and I just received a reply that they, uh, that they think it would be a good option for the town to do that. Um, so we're looking at getting that set up as quick as possible. Uh, information of course will be released as soon as uh, that is ready. Uh, the town is doing, uh, we've got a lot of people, uh, most people who can work remotely are working remotely now um, from home. And then we're also doing flexible schedules, trying to keep people apart as much as possible, keep everyone healthy. And our police department are doing, uh, as they patrol, they're encouraging citizens to practice social distancing as they see groups of people congregating. And in terms of, if you, if you want me to touch base on the governor's executive order 7S, Yes, please. As we know, the governor's executive order 7S gives uh, two options uh, to de defer taxes for 90 days or to re reduce the interest uh, to 3%. Uh, we have found out today there's going to be further guidance in the next further guidelines in the next two days. Whatever the town does will apply to the city, Groton Long Point, and the fire districts. So we're going to need to get a group meeting together and talk about options and how it impacts all of us because it's not going to be just for the town. The state is saying they want 169 applications and that's it. Um, and it'll apply to everyone. I have a message into uh, Mayor Hedrick so we can talk tomorrow, but all of us need to uh, be able to talk about that. And each of us are going to need to run our own calculations too on different scenarios and what the impacts would be to us. So 
uh, director, finance director Cindy Landry is working on that for the town. Uh, she just started that today because we've been tied up with the bond um, rating agencies the last week or two. Uh, just wrapped that up late yesterday. Um, and other than that, I wanted to announce a really generous uh, donation that came in today. Um, Stanley and Barbara White from Knowing donated $5,000 to the Groton Food Locker, which is you know, an amazing donation. Um, I just wanted to announce that. Very nice. Thank you for the report and thank you to um, the Whites. It's very generous. All right, so we will go down the council table. Councillor Baumgartner. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, John, for uh, your update. Um, and thank you and uh, the entire town staff for uh, the very hard work you're doing to ensure that the uh, town residents are safe uh, during this crisis. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to uh, our first responders who are uh, doing yeoman's work and also ensuring um, you know, that folks uh, remain healthy and the folks who are directly afflicted by this um, virus are uh, getting the help that they need. Um, and our uh, health professionals that are, are working in, uh, that live in town and uh, work at l and and our, our surrounding uh, hospitals as well, uh, who are working overtime right now. Um, I, uh, you know, would like to share a story. I, I'm sure many of you read in the paper about the uh, Hillary Company um, uh, who, uh, you know, uh, it's a, a metal shop in, um, you know, uh, route one and, um, led by, uh, Joe Dela Cruz who also serves as our state rep and, um, they produced, uh, thousands of, of metal strips that, um, uh, can be placed on, on N95 masks that they are, uh, donating to, uh, not just L&M hospital, but also sending out to New York city and, uh, throughout the state. So, uh, just the the amount of love and um, you know the love and and the support this company and so many other nonprofits whether you know it's um, and 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 the town you know whether it's human services or or the senior center um, you know it's been beautiful to watch our community come together um, and and help folks in need so um, again thank you to everyone who um, is you know doing their part to ensure that our neighbors are remain. Uh, safe and, and, uh, and healthy during this time. And, and um, you know, it's, it's gone a long way. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baumgartner. Um, Councillor Parker. Um, just receiving the emails from the public and everyone that is working or has to work as essential, um, please be safe. And um, thank you to the businesses that are open and trying to keep everything going along. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Parker. Councillor Franco. Thank you. Um, I watched the RTM committee uh, deliberations this uh, past weekend. Um, I've received many correspondence from residents regarding the William Seeley property, as well as the coronavirus and um, how it's affecting them. Um, also, uh, my son and I have been going out and driving around Groton and taking photographs and um, exploring our town and finding things that we have never seen before, which we find that very interesting. And I have on my list here that I want to discuss the number of um, the high number of unemployed people in our state, especially here in Groton, that I'm very concerned about. And I wanted to discuss the food locker and that they are accepting food and monetary donations. Um, and I would like to encourage everybody and anybody that could help to please contact them. Um, you can drop off your donations. Uh, they have a section that's um, corned off and you can put it in a, ba in a basket and they'll come out and meet you and bring your donations inside. And also if you are in need of assistance, you're welcome to call them, schedule a pickup time and you can go there and get um, food assistance as well. And um, cause I did, I actually dropped off something today and, um, and I put a post up on Facebook. So I am more than delighted and happy from the whites in knowing, and it has just absolutely made my day today to hear that they have, uh, donated, made this generous donation to help our neighbors in Groton. So thank you so much. Councilor Heed.
I am now unmuted. Uh, I you will go. go ahead and uh, echo everything that's been said before me and also give a shout out to my friends at uh, Big Y who uh, are right on the front lines. Um, so in addition to that, um, also like uh, Councillor uh, Franco, I've received numerous communications and also attended the uh, RTM budget uh, committee meetings. Well, I didn't attend. I watched them through Zoom, um, at least for, for most of the day. Uh, and then in addition to that, um, well, actually, I guess that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Heed. Councillor Obrey? Oh, there. I think I'm low. You don't have my picture, but that's just as good. <laughs> um, I just wanted to mention that the uh, Groton Rotary and the Mystic Rotary are both making substantial uh, contributions to the food locker. Um, I, I think the Groton Rotary is in the amount of maybe $5,000 with a matched amount. And I think Mystic is about the same. So should put us in a little bit better condition. Um, I wish I'd had the opportunity to speak to that last gentleman that had all the questions. Um, I don't remember his name. And if I ever get back into Connecticut, I'd love to meet with him and go over his all his questions about what had been done in the process because we have done everything that he asked about. But I'd love to have somebody have the opportunity to uh, to tell him that. And had I been able to vote, I would have voted yes on our last vote. Thank you, Councilor Obrey. Does Council that count? <laughs> <laughs> um, so next we are on to Councilor Bordelon. Thank you. Um, just want to second everything that was said. Uh, definitely thinking of our neighbors and um, people that are becoming um, needing support and help during this time when normally they were the ones giving the support to others. Um, just recently at my own job, people were starting to be laid off in the medical field because we are an ambulatory surgical center that's that does elective procedure and emergency procedures. And to see people's face when they're, when they're being um, cut from five days down to two and now having to apply for unemployment. So I just want to uh, second what Councillor Franco has said. Um, it's really important that we think of our food pantries, think of helping neighbors, simple things. Um, our elderly that can't come out, they might not have loved ones in the area. Um, it, knock on somebody's door and you know, or call them and just say, hey, is there something I can drop off for you? Um, sometimes it's um, just being have, having the access to get to the things that they need, they don't have a way. Um, I also listened and watched the um, RTM's budget sessions, uh, committee meetings. Um, I also, um, work part, very part-time with Ledge Light Health District and um, work with them for um, their program. And we're doing a lot of investigation work for the state for food insecurities. And boy, right now is the topic even more important. Um, just the number of people that need help right now waiting. Some people um, that I know that have been partially unemployed or fully unemployed, it's taken four to five weeks to get their first check um, when they were the first round. Um, and so, you know, trying to save as much money as possible. Please do not uh, dismiss other items that are not food items. Certain people do not have cash to buy essential things. Um, so just any way you can reach out and help. There's, it, it's amazing and, you know, thanks to the Whites and Dela Cruz and everybody else and, you know, the Rotary Club, all the different agencies and volunteers that are just stepping up donating things where they can, diapers, formula, um, things that we take for granted right now, people cannot afford. And it's it's amazing to see the people that are out there using their time as if they may be laid off, trying to help their neighbors. So continue the efforts and um, let's see where this can take us and I we will get through this. Thank you. Councilor Melendez. Hi, yeah, I just wanna shout out to the police department for really being at the forefront of, um, you know, keeping our, our um, citizens updated on the best possible way to stay safe from COVID-19 and keeping them, you know, um, safe during this time, you know, they're, they're on the front lines out there. So I just wanted to, to thank them for that. May I? Melendez. Um, Councillor Heed, you wanted to add something that you forgot about disposing of um, PPEs. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to remind everybody to um, 
if you're out with your plastic gloves and you know your face masks and you want to throw them away, please put them away in trash cans and uh, don't drop them on the street or the parking lots. Uh, it's Thank creating you, Councilor Heed. Um, so uh, I want to report out on the Golf Advisory Board meeting that was last evening. Um, they are looking at possibly changing the season pass dates. It normally runs April 1 to April 1, and they're looking at pushing back to May 1 to May 1 because they have people that are concerned with whether the course will be closing or not. So there was discussion of doing that. Um, they were tracking $100,000 ahead. Now it's looking like they're about $60,000 ahead instead. So they're uh, watching revenues carefully. Uh, they've been working on some social media promotions where they're getting very good return on their dollar for the um, boosting these posts or targeted posts um, promoting golf and the value of membership at Shanacossic Club. Um, and they were looking, they were concerned when they saw the um, postponement of the CIPs um, for the golf course. Um, but I told them that they were postponements and that we will be revisiting those again next year. And they were discussing a PGA program called Get Golf Ready. Um, it's a six week program. So that was the report out on the golf advisory board. We would just encourage all the golfers to please maintain their social distance. We would love to keep the course open for you, but we need you to do your part and um, keep your six feet when you're out there golfing. All right, so um, I just wanted to talk as a um, teacher. We are, we are in the classroom still, and I just wanted to offer words of encouragement to all the other teachers out there, but mainly to all the students out there. This is all new to all of us, and I just wanna encourage you to do your best and reach out to your teachers when you need help with anything, and they will do their best to help you out, and we will get through this, but keep plugging away at it and keep doing your online learning. It's important. All right, so May everyone I, has right. a chance to speak. I know, I see, I see other people wanna talk, yeah. Okay, so um, we have Councillor Franco. I'm sorry, I just wanted to um, jump in because I didn't hear Councillor Heed mention anything about the wonderful cleanup that he's been doing also in Groton. He seems to have a um, somebody go out with him, you know, like a new host, a co-host with him. And he posts these on Facebook that he's doing these wonderful cleanups. And I mean, I've seen the pictures where, I mean, at times there's like, it looked like there were 10 bags that he's, um, they're picking up and I think he's taken out Albert Colon, who's part of the RTM. And I think he's taking out a city councilor at one time as well. And he's doing these wonderful cleanups. And as the beautification chair, I think it's wonderful. And I would encourage anybody else because I see so many people out walking now, if they are out and about to also grab a bag and maybe help uh, pitch in and help clean up Groton as well, if you have time. Thank you. And thank you, Councilor Heed. Hello. Uh, uh, I just wanted to mention, I don't know if it's the same up there, but I expect it is. They're really looking for blood donations. Um, there's a real shortage of blood uh, because people have been nervous about coming out. So uh, you can call the Red Cross and make an appointment. So it's just you and the person you're working with. But it might be something to uh, have everybody think about. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Obrey. All right, um, all the councillors have had a chance to present their communications and reports, and we are on to the clerk of the representative town meeting. It's the RTM, uh, as uh, several of you uh, reported in your reports that uh, the RTM has started the budget process and uh, all of the subcommittees met last Saturday um, consecutively. It was it really went quite well. I, I have to uh, commend moderator she uh, she really followed your lead Ma madam mayor in uh, in understanding uh, the motivate you know how to move a meeting along so that they went through all the accounts and now they have a regular meeting tomorrow uh, at 7 30 and this will be on a zoom meeting also um, and it will be televised through uh, Broughton municipal television and that they have uh, three items on their agenda uh, and any other items that we might get this evening. Um, and then Saturday, uh, the 11th of uh, April uh, at nine o'clock a.m., uh, the annual meeting, I believe, was set for them. So that's where we're going. Uh, Madam Clerk, if 
there are citizens that wish to present petitions at the regular RTM meeting, can you provide the um, information as to how they would do that, please? Right, so they, they will either email uh, the town manager at, at town manager at Groton hyphen CT dot G it's council it's council at well, that's for um, council. Groton, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh you don't use yours well mine is Jay Burt at I, there isn't one that, that oh, I thought you figured, used okay anyway either or the town, town clerks town clerk at Groton hyphen CT dot gov I thought that the town manager had it <laughs> no, not that I've used it anyways <laughs> So is this um, on the website as well, where if they needed to, they could go ahead to the website and take a look at the email address, correct? I'll have to look at that, but I'll make sure that it is on there for, for both the uh, annual meeting on Saturday, because that's there's an opportunity there also for citizens to make comment. Thank you, and, Madam Clerk. And just to point out, there will be instructions on the agenda also, as well as the website mm -hmm. on how to submit. Very good. Thank you. Clerk of the Council. Um, do you think the items that I have to report um, would be that, that uh, the town clerk's office is, is mainly closed. We are uh, by appointment for um, marriage certificates. Everything else is being either uh, through the internet or, uh, or through the mail service. We also have a drop box outside of town hall for, for town clerk and probate business only, although I think that it's being used for other, uh, for other avenues. Uh, so, um, and um, funeral directors uh, also have access uh, to our office as we are re required by um, the Department of Health to submit all death uh, registered deaths uh, on a weekly basis instead of a monthly basis. So it's a little, little more hairy. I'm um, running short staff. I have down two staff members uh, at this moment. Um, uh, one, one for COVID. She's not. She doesn't have it. She's just. Uh, she's just. Uh, uh, has health issues that her doctor says that she must not be around people. So she's in shelter uh, or quarantine or whatever you want to call it, self, self quarantine. Um, and so it's, it's a little hairy. So uh, also I had a, a meeting this morning uh, with the Secretary of State's office and um, they're keeping us uh, informed with weekly updates. If there's any, there hasn't been any changes. The, the uh, primary has been postponed for the presidential preference primary to June 2nd. Um, there is, um, there, there, the uh, Secretary of State has written a, a letter to the uh, governor asking for uh, the governor to lift the restrictions for absentee ballots. Um, although I have to caution everyone who's listening that that's a constitutional action. And I don't know if the, I don't believe that the, the governor, I think the legislature has to uh, petition the, the, the uh, electorate to change the constitution. So that's not, I don't think that that's going to happen, but there may be um, it may be encouragement to for people to uh, use absentee ballots uh, for, for uh, the presidential preference primary. November, I don't think we're going to have any issues, but then again, who knows, right? I can't Thank see you. the future. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, Mr. Manager, is there anything else you wanted to add at this juncture? No, I don't have anything. Thank you. And I don't believe there are any department heads with us this evening, um, nor the superintendent or board of ed. Is that correct? Well, John Ryan is here, but he'll be speaking in just a few okay, minutes, great. I believe. All right, so we are on to Roman numeral nine, committee reports, committee of the whole. I don't have anything to report. Um, temporary rules, Chairman Obrey. Um, we, we have not met, uh, but what, what I'm gonna try to do is a meeting at our appointed date through this same system. So if we could have it put out that we are gonna have a meeting, if Conrad and Juliet are in agreement. Thank you, Councilor Obrey. Um, uh, excuse me, Councilor yeah. Parker. Uh, it's Baumgardner. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> I saw that shining head, it just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, um, Councillor Obrey, Councillor Parker, and Councillor Baumgartner would like to schedule a um, temporary rules committee meeting. So, um, perhaps you could shoot Mr. Bird or Ms. Hilton an email giving them the date when you would like to meet. Okay. Thank Let you. Let me know, guys, what you want. We'll set it up. Thank you. Thank you. Personnel and appointments, Chairman Melendez, anything to report? We didn't have a meeting in February. 
but I don't think uh, we didn't have a meeting in March, but I don't think I uh, gave an update on our February meeting yet. Um, we nominated Sashi Nadana Siva to the library board, Aaron Kane to the ethics commission, Taylor Samuel to the fair rank commission, Susan Sutherland to planning and zoning and Eric Goodman and Mark Summers switched places on the historic commission. Uh, one of them was alternate, the other one was um, active and then they, they switched places. So. Thank you, Councilor Melendez. Um, and then regular rules, Chairman Heed, anything? No report. Thank you. So we are on to new business and this is 2020-124 Sealy School Property option agreement um, and we are at I believe Councillor Parker yes give me one second to get to that Certainly. page Space. apologize on the back side of the contributions to trust funds. Well, that's how I'm I, I, I'm actually looking at it on the computer, so it's totally oh. different. <laughs> <laughs> so is it, what number is that? 20? 2020, 120 Sealy School Property Option Agreement. Wow. 2020, 2120. Okay. Resolution to enter into the, an option to purchase agreement with Don Mar for the William Sealy School property. Whereas the town of Groton owns excess buildings and properties that are no longer needed for public uses or that have been acquired through foreclosures due to unpaid taxes. And whereas the town has been marketing the William Sealy School property for over a decade. And whereas the town has been working with the selected preferred development team. Don Mar as the purchasing entity on a proposal for the site and whereas an option to purchase for the eventual purchase of the property has been prepared by the town attorney and is ready to be signed by Don Mar and the town manager after authorization by the town council and now therefore be it resolved that the town council hereby authorizes the town manager to enter into the option to purchase agreement with Don Mar for the William C. Seeley School property, I so move. Second heed. Thank you, moved by Parker and seconded by Heed. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Bird, I believe Mr. Reiner is with us. Uh, Mr. Yes. Bronk is with us. Um, yes, they're, they're both gonna they're speak in a moment. And I just wanted to point out that we also have our attorney, Eric Callahan available, Anthony DeJoya from uh, Don Mars uh, present, and then uh, Mike Goman and Rob Mantessi from Goman in New York are also Thank you, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening, John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development Services. Um, so I just wanted to briefly go over, we did discuss a lot of this at the committee of the whole meeting, but again, the town has been working with the real estate marketing firm, Goman in New York, marketing the former Williams Seeley School property. In many instances, um, actually the Seeley School is the only school excess property that we're actually working with an independent real estate firm. All of the other schools that we uh, are marketing right now, staff, uh, Paige Bronk, taking the lead with his team, uh, assisting you know, with town manager Bert, myself, uh, and others in our department and other divisions within the town to, to do the marketing and the promotion on these. But uh, the Sealy School is a little bit of a unique situation. So we brought in Goldman York for some of their assistance on this. We, as discussed during the public hearing uh, and our development process, we went out to bid. We worked with Goman York, um, had interviews. The interview committee in that um, instance was made up of members from Goman York, the town council, staff, town manager Burt. And we then, as an interview committee, met with a number of firms going through uh, that process and took our preferred, our recommended for a developer, Don Mar, to the council in the executive session. We then had that public meeting. After that public meeting that Don Mar and the town staff put on to introduce the plans, we came to the council back in March to present 
the plans publicly before the council as well as the option agreement and that's kind of where we are at this point in time now i can also get into a little bit more detail you know when we went through that development process that i talked about before when the interview committee makes a recommendation on the preferred developer status, the preferred developer selection criteria includes a lot of things, looking at the proposed use, the developer experience, the financial benefit to Groton, the developer's ability to finance the property, their ability to execute actually the agreement, take it through the planning and zoning and other regulatory process, and the schedule for what they can do for actually getting the project built. Don Mar offered the best quality product and benefit to Groton of all of the responsive bidders. In addition, some questions have been asked about the demolition of the Sealy School and why that would cost more than the Noang School demolished several years ago. The bidder Don Mar, as part of their kind of secondary uh, information that they gave us, included their estimate on all the expected costs, including the approximately $2.1 million estimate for demolition. Part of the higher cost for demolition of Sealy could be that Sealy is 58,740 square feet in size with the full basement, while No Inc. was only 32,500 square feet in size with a 1,600 square foot basement. So there's been some uh, misinformation out there about the size of the schools. Uh, Sealy School is substantially larger than the No Inc. School. Additionally, uh, different buildings can have different hazardous materials. Sealy School is known to have asbestos, lead paint, high levels of lead, and uh, mold in the air. The town in the proposed, um, the proposal selection process looks at estimates, but doesn't, we don't get independent estimates on the components. So we don't uh, ask for demolition estimates, nor have we gone out and validated uh, those estimates. The town, and in this case, their advisors, Goldman and York, look to see whether the numbers look overall, uh, overall realistic. Since the question came up though, we did ask Public Works uh, just yesterday for a rough cost estimate that of what could be expected on demolition. Using the size of the school in their estimate and some recent bids that they've gotten through the school project, their estimate to demolish the school based on uh, a competitive process was about $1,470,000. But again, this is a rough estimate that they had uh, prepared back um, from a number of other projects. The estimate that Don Mar provided, that 2.1 million, was an estimate that they had had prepared by one firm. Don Mar will still have to do their due, due diligence on all of their costs should the option to purchase agreement be approved. Since this is a package bid selection process, the town is not responsible for veering, verifying the all the different costs that go into preparing a bid package. The process is focused on obtaining the best product, the desired product that best fits the needs of the town, the price offered for the purchase of the land, the amount of tax abatement requested, and the taxes likely to be produced, which often leads to a great positive impact on the tax rules, being more important than the purchase price if combined with the low ask on the tax abatement. Uh, just for informational purposes, other bidders on the project we're looking for substantial tax abatements of at least seven to 10 years of the full value of the tax abatement. Other development teams per, uh, purchase price offers were basically as a function of the overall bid package equivalent to Don Mars. Don Mar is not asking for a seven or 10 year tax abatement. Um, I think they've been very responsive working with us through this process, meeting the needs of what the um, the interview committee was looking for, as well as very responsive to the RFP. And I think that they will build a high quality product in Groton, and they're gonna continue to manage that product um, once they do build that, if this agreement goes through, after they go through the planning and zoning process, as well as inland wetlands, and get other approvals as necessary. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, I don't know, Paige, if you had anything that you wanted to add. Mr. Bronk, if you'd like to speak, just identify yourself, please, for the public. This is Paige Bronk, uh, Economic and Community Development Manager for the town. Um, only one other comment, and that pertains to the demand for housing. We've heard from Electric Boat, Pfizer, and others that there is a demand for contemporary housing. Um, a housing unit is not a housing unit. And we've learned this through our market analysis that was done 
We're also hearing it from the development community and also our major employers that if we're going to be attracting employees who not only are going to be working in town, but also living here, we need more housing option. And one of the options is more of this type of housing uh, where it's amenity rich and it's quite attractive in particular to a younger workforce, but it's not exclusive to that. It's also attractive to empty nesters as well. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Do any of the other um, gentlemen who are here with us this evening wish to speak before we open it up for the council? This is John Burt. I just wanted to mention uh, uh, that this would have to go through the RTM also um, for sale of property. So the, the option agreement goes to the RTM? No, not, not this. I'm just saying down the road in order to sell it. Eventually, if you're going to actually sell it, then it, no matter who's purchasing, it has to go through the RTM. Correct. So there would be plenty of opportunity for the public right. to weigh in again if there are further concerns. Right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, Reiner. Yes, uh, John Reiner. Um, as Mr. Burt uh, had mentioned, not only does this get referred to the RTM, but there is, and I really can't stress enough, the extensive regulatory process before the Planning and Zoning Commission our Inland Wetlands Commission, and before Donmar can make application to our regulatory commissions that actually have to come back to the council, there's a, a section in that, that option agreement so that the council sees that final site plan before it's submitted to the Planning and Zoning Commission to give it their final blessing. Thank you, Mr. Reiner. Uh, did any of the other gentlemen wish to speak or should we open it up? All right, are there counselors that have questions? Not seeing hands. Councilor Franco. Hi, thank you all for coming. Um, so can you tell them or tell everybody what the increase we would see in our tax base after this is built? Um, we had, this is John Reiner again, we had run some initial estimates. Um, I don't have those right in my hand. I know that, I think I will get back to you on that. I feel like it was somewhere in the multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I can't remember the exact number. Uh, let me, while other questions are coming up, let me see if I can find some documentation on that. Okay, thank you. Because that, that I, I do recall there was an email or some kind of communication that was sent because I had requested this information earlier. So maybe John Burke could um, look that up quick as well. Um, so going back to the demolition. So basically, I think as a counselor, one of the things that I was taking into consideration was taking the demolition versus the sales price and the tax abatement requests that would be put in by a bidder. And taking those things into consideration um, and also the overall impact that this would have on for the value of our community. So when it comes down to the actual sales price, I think the demolition does matter because you're basically saying to um, the person that's purchasing, you're going to take care of basically a $2 million price tag here on your own without having also the increase on um, the purchase. And especially in the environment we're right in right now, I think this is um, a normal thing. I don't think um, I've seen other properties in town that have gone for a very small amount because of the remediation and the demolition costs that are involved. And then the overall impact that would be beneficial to the town and the increase in the taxes that we would benefit from. So, I would like to thank John, Mr. Reiner for um, giving us the information because this is what I was told also when I had requested um, the, the amount of demolition. And um, they, he had informed us of also look at, uh, there was a demolition over in Stonington after a building had collapsed and the, the demolition costs that were involved in that and how expensive they were, the knowing property was smaller. And then also the knowing property was smaller. 
it was 10 years ago, the prices have increased when it comes to remediation. And also there are differences between what's at William Sealy compared to um, knowing, because this uh, was something that was, I had questioned myself as the drastic difference in price. And I thought that was a very sticking point for me to, to know. Uh, the tra And I also wanted to, as many people have mentioned, do you, what it, can you give us more information on the traffic study? Because I think this will, this will make a big impact on the neighborhood and what the traffic study could possibly or potentially give us for information and what kind of changes could they possibly even say that could be done? Uh, sure, uh, John Reiner. So two things, I uh, was just kind of running through some numbers. I think it was somewhere in the ballpark of approximately $750,000 a year at full build out of the site once it's finished for tax revenue. So that's what we'd be looking at on a yearly basis, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, as far as needing to do a traffic study, um, it, it's kind of hard without having the study in hand to look at what the recommended options would be, but there would be uh, improvements to the roadway, looking at uh, turning lanes coming in and out of the, the, the parcel, whether it's a stop sign, whether it's a light, you know, looking at the traffic flows, uh, improvements that might be needed to sidewalks. Those are things that we would be working with the developer and the Planning and Zoning Commission through that regulatory process. So it's, it's kind of hard to say what will come out of it, but the traffic study, working with their engineers and our own engineering team through Public Works, we would be looking to make sure that we keep the area as safe as possible. Is it possible that when you we leave when somebody leaves that property onto Walker Hill Road, would there be a potential to have a right turn only coming out of that parking lot to go to bring traffic flowing down towards Route 12 instead of up into Walker Hill into the neighborhood? It, it's possible. I don't know if it would be advisable because um, then I don't. Again, have to look at the what the traffic engineers look, uh, suggest, some of the traffic that's on Walker Hill Road right now. And I'm sure it's something we could work with the developers on. Again, you, we want to keep it as safe of an intersection as it comes out onto Walker Hill Road from the Sealy School property as possible. Because I think um, many of the neighbors are concerned about the traffic going up into the neighborhood I don't know if they're as concerned and maybe I have to reach out to them or they can reach out to me and we could discuss this, but I think maybe something that may work is a right turn only and have them go down towards Route 12. That's just something that I was thinking that may alleviate some of these issues and um, they may be happier with the project if that was something that was in it. Okay. Thank you. We can certainly look in, yeah, we can certainly look into that option. Uh, you know, Anthony DeJoy from Don Mars on the call um you know right now so it's something he's hearing so as we go through the design process i do know that that road right now is a major cut through road going from one part of town you know up walker hill road so um i, I think that's one of our bigger traffic issues there is the amount of cut through traffic that comes through that roadway now Thank you, Mr. Reiner. I just remind everybody that we're dealing with the purchase agreement this evening and um, many of these details that many of us are concerned with, uh, especially the neighbors. Um, these are all going to be coming out and there will be multiple um, opportunities to have input and have discussion about them. Councillor Bumgardner had his hand up. Councillor Bumgardner, do you still wish to speak? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have a question for Mr. Reiner. Um, as a uh, you know, the committee was considering several proposals and um, when, uh, you know, you were, you were meeting with Don Moore Corporation and putting together kind of the conceptual, uh, they were putting together the conceptual site plan. Um, what considerations were given to connectivity and, and making uh, the surrounding property a bit more uh, pedestrian friendly and how that actual, uh, the uh, proposed development uh, interacts with the, the neighborhood? Um, uh, so again, John Reiner, so in their conceptual site plans, they were looking at uh, buffering options for the surrounding neighborhoods, ways that they could have the trails that they're proposing to have on their site connect to 
roadways and other neighborhoods if the neighbors want those because that's something we need to really determine we don't want to assume we've heard some input that the neighbors would like to be able to utilize trails and walk through the property so that's something again through that planning and zoning process we would really flesh out those details as far as connectivity to the property uh, adjacent that had frontage on Route 12, the developer uh, will and the town would require them to leave uh, an ability to connect the two properties in the future if through this process there was a way for those two to start uh, syncing up and develop at the same time. And again, when you look at the site plan, um, you know, it seems like there is about a, a parking space plus one or, you know, plus or minus one um, for every uh, you know, proposed unit. So it's about roughly uh, 280 proposed units. So um, there seems to be a lot of surface parking lots. So sort of a two part question. Um, one, I, I know obviously uh, it hasn't gone through the planning and zoning uh, regulatory process, but uh, can you share some of the ideas uh, that have been brought forward by the uh, developer with respect to how they plan on managing uh, stormwater runoff because there will most certainly be a uh, substantial increase given the amount of um, of uh, per, uh, non permeable surfaces. Uh, yeah, so I think kind of the two part question to that one, uh, that's a conceptual design and the number of parking spaces that will end up being on that site will have to be consistent with what's required via our zoning regulations. Also within our zoning regulations, uh, we've recently done, you know, a complete regulatory overhaul and one of those components was updating our stormwater standards. Uh, they're very strict standards and they will adhere to the best scientific principles so that they're managing all the stormwater runoff for, you know, quality of water, the volume of water. And that's something that we have said to the developer since day one, and they're very aware of what they need to deal with from a stormwater management perspective on the site. Uh, thank you. And um, also, um, you know, the, well, have, uh, we have uh, the J JLIS study and, and several other studies with respect to um, the, uh, you know, how Groton will uh, manage uh, growth in, in future years and some recommendations to that. Um, Councillor Heed earlier had mentioned that the um, Councillor Heed had mentioned that uh, you know we're, uh, electric boat potentially could have a shuttle bus that goes into the site. So how how will the proposed development interact with kind of uh, surrounding transit and uh, uh, surrounding uh, transit and interact with uh, you know our our public uh, transportation? That was something that Don Mar uh, had heard loud and clear at that public meeting from some of the comments uh, when we were kind of uh, breaking into small groups at the end about the possibility of the connectivity with shuttle services from EB or other avenues throughout the town. That was something that they were going to work into uh, their revised design. I think they actually already showed us another plan that had an ability for a shuttle bus to pull into the site because that the more that they could utilize either public transportation or shuttles, the less surface parking they would need. And if the less surface parking that they have to build, it, it makes the site that much better. And uh, in, in speaking of that, uh, you know. Hey, hey, counselor, come on, give somebody else a shot. Okay, we have we have other counselors uh, waiting to speak. Councilor Bumgarner, did you have another question very briefly? I'll yield the floor to my, uh, my yeah. good friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Baumgartner. So just so everybody knows, I have Councillor Overy, Councillor Bordelon, um, Councillor Heed um, in the queue. So Councillor Overy. I will try to keep mine short. I just want to say that I'm very excited about this project. I've had the ability to be involved since the very onset. I know things have been gone through properly. I would just remind the councillors that when we came on to the council originally, our original group, one of our things were to put the school buildings back onto the tax rolls in some manner. And I think we're really, really making that happen. And we should be very proud of ourselves. And we should be especially happy with uh, having John Reiner and Paige Bronk guiding us through this. So if we want to do a good job for our citizens, I think what we need to do is be at the planning and zoning meetings and follow this along and get this wonderful project up 
and on to the tax rolls and move on to the next empty school. Thank you very much. Okay, we are on to Councillor Bordelon. Thank you. Um, I just want to um, just for, so it's stated. So if the dollar amount, which is a dollar that it's being purchased for, if this property at all doesn't go through for whatever reason, the property then defaults back to the town. Is that correct? That was one of the well, questions well, that I had asked. So the town owns the property right now. Uh, there was also right. uh, in some of the correspondence we received, the town is not paying itself taxes. So there's no tax revenue right now from this property. Correct. It has an assessed value by the town, but it doesn't pay itself taxes. The town will retain ownership of the property until Don Mar um, goes through and actually executes um, to close on the property. At this point in time, they're looking to do that around the time that they get their planning and zoning approval and then go and apply for a building permit so that they can demolish the building and start uh, moving things along. Thank you. Yeah. So we I wouldn't sell it until after right. they actually take over the, um, right. get all their land use approvals. Okay, thank you. Um, my other question, my other thought on all this, uh, you know, hearing everything, I mean, I, I came to this at the tail end of it, but um, I did appreciate their presentation that I had seen and um, really thinking of the needs of what the constituents are saying regarding the traffic. Um, I had brought up the shuttle service, even from the casinos, EV, Pfizer, I, I think that would be um, another way, um, of, of course, also with Councillor um, Franco's statement looking at that traffic study. So I, I'm excited to see where this goes. Thank you. Councillor Heed. Uh, John Reiner touched upon what I was going to ask. I was just interested in what the timeline is for um, when the property will actually be sold and transferred and when uh, we might see uh, construction begin. Uh, so I think Don Mar is pretty much ready to go doing their due diligence over the next few months, uh, finalizing the site, pl the site plan so that they can then bring them to the council and then through the regulatory process. I think we'll see them back to the council probably in the next three months, maybe less, maybe a little bit more to present that final plan than from there going to the Planning and Zoning Commission. That should take a few months time as well as uh, inland wetlands. And then, you know, from there, I think we'd start to see the closing of the property, the demolition, and then uh, shortly thereafter that, the construction. Thank you. Um, Mr. Reiner, process question for you, please. Um, for the public, for the neighbors, for any citizens in town who wanna to follow the process, what's the best way for them to do so? Uh, if they would shoot me an email, um, we can let them know when we're getting applications or, I mean, really the best thing is to keep an eye, watch the Planning and Zoning Commission agendas. Before they go to the Planning and Zoning Commission, they will go to Inland Wetlands. But if public wants to, members of the public want to send me an email and ask to be notified when these things go on the agenda, we can certainly do that also for either Inland Wetlands or the Planning and Zoning Commission. They could send it to myself and or Deb Jones in the department. And again, along the way, I know I've said this before and you've said this before as well, there's gonna be the opportunity for public input at every step along the way. Yes, there will be, yes, there will be. Also, um, if members of the public go to the Triton Square website, there's, uh, areas where they could be notified through that of the process. And I would certainly encourage people to do that. And, that and I would, do know that, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, that would be through um, through the Donmar group is um, running that website. So they would have direct contact with the developer in that way? Yes. Great, thank you. Um, so Councilor Bordelon has her hand up again, but I wanted to see if any other first time counselors wish to speak because we haven't heard from a few. And I am not seeing any other hands. So, Councilor Bordelon, back to you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to stress again how important um, it is as a town that we um, effectively uh, put maybe this information on the on the computer as new developments come on, having the link. So maybe we could attach that link. Um, that way, the constituents in the town and uh, taxpayers 
have a way of accessing information as development starts to happen, where things are. Um, not everybody tracks, you know, the town council or government page, but having a section where we're devoting um, anything to our um, TIF um, properties that are being like, once they're at the point where they can be publicly known what is going on, that we have a link and we can kind of track the development. I think that would be very helpful. Councilor Baumgartner has his hand up again. Would you like to speak, sir? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I uh, just like to comment on on uh, the proposed plan. Um, you know, I, I certainly value and appreciate the work that you know the, our, our town staff has done to um, push forth this project uh, project um, in conjunction with uh, the uh, oversight committee. Um, uh, however, I, I do have a lot of concerns just regarding the and how, how the plan, I, I'm sorry, how the project connects with, uh, you know, the rest of the neighborhood and, and really enhances walkability. Um, our POCD clearly does spell out that we are, you know, we, we um, that in the future we'd like to build housing that is walkable, it's connected um, in many ways, uh, you know, it, that would is reflected in, uh, typically reflected in mixed use developments and this uh, isn't, a mixed use development. I know in the past, um, you know, the town has looked at, at that site as a potential site for mixed use um, for several different reasons that that um, fell through. But um, I, I do have significant concerns about the uh, dramatic increase in traffic, what that will do to Walker Hill, that it, road that is not uh, easily equipped to handle that increase in traffic, and what that will do in terms of uh, harming a pedestrian safety or at least improving pedestrian safety uh, in the area considering Walker Hill Road does not have so a sidewalk. Um, certainly, you know, obviously down the road, the town can talk about doing that in conjunction with the project, but, um, you know, uh, also in, in terms of the open space uh, or, or proposed uh, open space, it isn't clear as to whether or not that will be um, recreational space that will be offered to the public as opposed to just residents. Um, in one of the letters uh, written by uh, Ms. Cotto, she had stated that um, currently, for example, um, uh, the, the playground uh, is a site that, you know, any, uh, a, any, any young uh, child in the town can uh, use. Uh, however, uh, if, uh, you know, once uh, the Sealy's property is done away with, um, there won't be any um, park, park uh, land in that direct area that is accessible to the public. To the fact that the nearest playground is <coughs> housing. Um, so I, I really hope that's something that is rectified. I, I hope in the future, uh, especially as we consider future development projects, we really do place a greater emphasis on looking to do more mixed use developments. And I know uh, both, um, uh, you know, our, uh, both John Reiner and Paige Bronk have been emphatic in, in supporting that, especially as they've looked to um, supporting uh, or looking to uh, improve our, our downtown grot and then you know hopefully one day we have uh, you know a mixed use development down there uh, and, and maybe even a, a train station and so those are kind of the, the things that kind of make it all connected once you have a mixed use development usually a train station follows or, or vice versa and then you have transit facilities you have bike lanes and that is really what I think brings young people in brings empty nesters who are looking to get away from from using the car to get to and from everything they need. And, and I think Groton is u uniquely in a position to, um, you know, um, in become a more interconnected uh, community by placing a greater emphasis on that. So um, I, uh, again, just have a few concerns about um, kind of the, again, the impact on, on traffic in the area and, and again, how, how the, the plan does interact with the community, but I appreciate the developers, um, you know, uh, who, you know the developers um, recognition that they would you know like to incorporate sustainable practices uh, within the uh, proposed development and um, and uh, just uh, like to obviously thank our town staff for, for the hard work they've done to promote uh, this site for for uh, a few years now thank you thank you um, mr. DeJoya I know you're with us this evening did you wish to um, address any remarks to the council at this point sir um just uh, a few things to go back to the demolition. I know Mr. Potter had asked about um, some of the exclusions that were on there. I had given him a response that some of them were standard practice um, to have those things excluded. 
Those were um, things like permit fees, any taxes, um, disconnect fees, safety fencing, things like that. So that's what I was referring to when it was uh, standard industry practice to have those types of things excluded from a quote. Um, and we were obviously well aware of those, those items. Thank you, Mr. DeJoy. All right, I think um, all the counselors who wish to speak have spoken. No, nope. Councilor Franco would like to speak again. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we have seen renderings of the property and um, they, they didn't look like they were in full detail. So I couldn't really tell what the siding would look like or how the windows would look or all these other details. I mean, the rendering is just a concept, right? It's not what it's actually going to look like. Is that correct? Do, do you wish Mr. DeJoya to answer or Mr. Reiner? Whoever would like to answer. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I can take that one. This is uh, Anthony from Donmar. Um, so we think that this is gonna be a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. Some things may change. Um, we've gone through about three or four different styles so far. And I think that this was the one that we decided was the best fit for the property. Um, we haven't made a final decision as to what that exact material or the exact color that it's going to be on the outside. Um, but generally, this is the direction that we're going to take the building in um, architecturally. So it's kind of a, a blend between something modern and something a little bit traditional. And is that the same uh, rendering you had at the public hearing? Yeah, um, it is. So if you go on the SealySchool.com, you can see um, a couple of the pictures in there, and they're in a little bit more detail, so you can actually see them on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll get a little bit better of an idea than than the boards and stuff that we had at the meeting. Right, because I didn't see like um, what you thought like an apartment would look like or what their kitchens would look like. So yeah, so so those that's why the the style of the building is going to uh, change a little bit. Once we start to proceed with this uh, process, we're going to have a uh, market feasibility study done. And what that's going to do is that's going to help us determine what the optimal mix of units are for the building. Mm -hmm. And once once we get that optimal mix, it's going to it's going to kind of change the way that the building's laid out slightly, um, because we don't have an exact way to fit the apartments in there until we know what style apartments are going to be in there. Okay. So, so yeah, because I mean the boards that were at the public hearing, I mean it doesn't give you an actual sense of exactly what it's going to look like. So that's what those were just the renderings, but more to come is basically what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, these are these are very early stage concepts, but it generally the outside architecture is the direction that we're going to be uh, be taking it in. Um, as we as we progress, then it's gonna kind of solidify a little bit and we'll have a better idea of the exact layouts of the apartments, the exact sizes and exactly what they're gonna look like inside. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, yep. Mr. DeJoya. I appreciate you calling in tonight. All right, so um, we will vote on 2021-20 Sealy School Property Option Agreement. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Bordelon? Yes. So we have, um, we have Franco, Melendez, Heed, Parker, Granatoski and Obrey in favor, Bumgardner opposed, and Bordelon abstain. One, two. It's in favor, one opposed, one abstention. That motion passes. Thank you. We are at eight counselors. Thank you very much, Mr. DeJoya, Mr. Callahan, and um, Mr. Montesi and Mr. Goman. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Have a good night. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you, you too. All right, we are on to 2021 13 Fort Hill Road land transfer, and I believe we are on Councilor Franco. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, hold on just a second. Uh, 13 Fort Hill Road land transfer. A uh, resolution referring the transfer of 1,329 square feet of land to 13 Fort Hill Road, LLC to the Planning and Commission under CGS Section 8-24. Whereas in October 1992, the town of Groton transferred a small parcel of land on the south end of the Pontic Bridge Volunteer Fire Company 
property at 13 Fort Hill Road, and whereas the Peponic Bridge volu Volunteer Fire Company sold the 13 Fort Hill Road property and the strip of land automatically reverted to the town ownership, and whereas the, the owners, 13 Fort Hill Road, LLC, have asked the town to quit claim the land to them, and whereas the proposal to sell or transfer land, public land, must be refer referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission per CGS 8-24, now be it resolved that the Town Council refers the transfer of the property to the Planning and Zoning Commission for review per CGS 8-24. I so move. Second, Heed. Second. Thank you, by Franco and seconded by Heed. And I would just remind everybody that this is on the referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission as per the Connecticut General Statutes. Can I say one thing? Yes, please, Mr. Burt. And John Reiner is available too, if you have any questions. I know uh, Councillor uh, Franco has asked for some history on this property. Um, the, the COVID, as well as the, the uh, school bonds and ratings process and the budget have just made it so the finance department has not had any time. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> but um, um, again, this would not commit anything, the town to anything. It's just, it's a simple question. Hey, if we sold this, would that fit into our plan? And it, so. There's no real action taken. Thank you, Mr. Burt. And I'm not seeing any hand, so we will vote on 2021-5913 Fort Hill Road land transfer. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Councilor Franco, can you unmute? Are you opposed? Opposed, thank you. Any abstentions? Zero abstentions. So that passes seven in favor, one opposed, Franco, and zero abstentions. We are on to 2020-160, appointment of other attorneys. And I believe we are on Councillor Heed, please. Oh, wait a minute. All right, uh, so I'll make a motion. Uh, Hold to on one second, please. Um, Mr. Burt, do we have, that's on my agenda, but I don't have a uh, motion for that, or did I just not get it printed? Or the, uh, which one are we on? Um, my agenda has 2021-61 appointment of other attorneys, but um, I don't have it in my packet. I have Ch Children First Groton next. There should have been one. Um, I don't see it either. I think it can wait to the next time, that's fine. Lisa must not have included it okay so then we are not going to 2020 161 we are instead going to 2020 175 one children first Groton collaborative grant um Council. did you check page 26 ours is not paginated hmm. yeah i don't i don't have it tabbed i usually tab two and I didn't um, I didn't find it when I tabbed. Um, Councilor Heat, if you could go to 2020 175 one, please. Sure. Um, resolution authorizing the superintendent of schools to execute the contract between the Connecticut Council for Philanthropy and Groton Public Schools to receive grant funding in the amount of $20,600. <laughs> Refer the matter to the RTM 6.5.3 whereas Children First Groton and School Readiness Council were recently awarded grant funding in the amount of 20600 from the Connecticut Early Childhood Funder Collaborative, and whereas the grant will assist in focusing on the expansion of the Children First Groton and School Readiness Council Collaborative Leadership Group to be more diverse and broaden the representation reflective of the community, and whereas by successfully partnering with underrepresented groups such as parents, military families, and faith-based members, along with increasing the number of residents participating, Children First Groton and School Readiness Council will strengthen the effectiveness, depth, and scope of the work resulting in collaborative, uh, resulting in a collaborative that represents the diverse population of Groton. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Council authorizes the Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Mike Grenier, and exec to execute the contract agreement between the Connecticut Council for Philanthropy as the fiscal sponsor for the Connecticut Early Childhood Funder Collaborative and the Groton Public Schools as the fiscal sponsor for the Children First Groton School Readiness Council Collaborative and to receive the grant funding in the amount of $20,600, I so move. Second. Please, please add refer to RTM 653. 
to your motion. Here to the RTM 6.5.3, I so move. Parker, second. Moved by Heed and seconded by Parker. Thank you very much. How do I say this? I'm sorry? I'm hearing a voice, but I'm not seeing a hand. Okay, uh, I see no discussion. So we will vote on 2020-175 Children First Grant and Collaborative Grant. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously with eight in favor. Thank you. We are on to 2020 one 2020 Neighborhood Assistance Act. And I think we are on to Councillor Obrey. Okay. Resolution to approve the 2020 Neighborhood Assistance Act proposal for the Bill Memorial Library, Eastern Connecticut Housing Opportunities, Sacred Heart Church, Groton Housing Authority, Fairview, and Avery Corp Museum. Whereas the town of Groton has received proposals from the Bill Memorial Library, Eastern Connecticut Housing Opportunities, Sacred Heart School, Groton Housing Authority, Fairview, and Avery Corp Museum for the 2020 Neighborhood Assistance Act. And whereas the town of Groton Department of Planning and Development Services received a proposal from each of these entities to act to achieve tax credit savings on any energy efficiency and energy conservation projects. And whereas the Town of Groton Office of Planning and Development Services supports the proposals from each of these entities and acknowledges that the post-program review will be their responsibility. And whereas the Town Council held a public hearing on the 2020 20 Neighborhood Assistance Act applicants on May 5th, 2020, and whereas the Town of Groton Town Council supports the proposal from each of these entities, now therefore be it resolved that the Town Council hereby approves the proposal for the Bill Memorial Library, Eastern Connecticut Housing Opportunities, Sacred Heart School, Groton Housing Authority, Fairview, and Avery Corp Museum for the 2020 Neighborhood Assistance Act. I so move. I second the right honorable gentle lady. Thank you. <laughs> and seconded by Bum Gardner, rather formally, but that's wonderful. Um, <laughs> Councilor, um, the online package that's posted on our website does have the resolution, so I don't know why the one we have does not. Lisa checked one she sent out and it had it. So I don't know if two versions went out. So I don't know if you, um, I don't think it's, a, we're, we're going to have to have a special meeting in the next, before the 25th for the tax options. May I interrupt, um, sir? Oh, sure. Let's, let's go to that after we get through this vote, please. Oh, sorry. I thought you, <laughs> I was looking it up. I thought you voted. Sorry about that. No, thank you. Um, so, so we are on the Neighborhood Assistance Act. It was moved by Obrey, seconded by Bumgardner. And I am not seeing any hands, so we will vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. Eight in favor, zero opposed, zero abstentions. Um, Mr. Burke, did you want to talk to us about that now, sir? Sure. Um, it's in the online pack. Um, I don't know why the one that got emailed out, the latest one, didn't have it. So I don't know if you want, uh, you know, I could read it out myself or else just hold it. We're gonna to have to have a special meeting before the 25th to adopt one of the options on the tax, either a deferral or the 3%. We could uh, we could put it on that same meeting if you wanted. It's not I a huge deal that. if it has to wait a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'd prefer that because- Okay, uh, that's, like that's fine. Be able to take a good sure. look at it and ask questions. Thank you. Sure. So we are going to Councilor Melendez for 2020-189-1 affordable housing plan grant, please. Am I being skipped? I was next. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilor oh, Bordelon? Mel no, I'm Melinda, that's fine. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon, would you like to take this one? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. I make a motion, a resolution adopting the Fair Housing Action Plan for 2020-23, whereas the Congress of the United States in 1866, the 1866 Civil Rights Act, 42 U.S.C. 19... 
Yes. We have a revised oh. motion. Okay. Let me pull that up. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. You'll like this one better. It's much shorter. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you know what time was? Oh, I got it. Okay. It's coming up. Maybe somebody else. Somebody else. Um, that's, that's fine. Um, Councilor Bordelon, did you want to jump in or? I'm fine. Thanks. I have it open. Thank you. Resolution authorizing submission of an application to the State Department of Housing for planning and grant funds to prepare and adopt an affordable housing plan. Whereas the State Department of Housing, DOH, offers competitive funding for municipalities under 50,000 persons to apply for planning grant funds to prepare and adopt an affordable housing plan under the provision of state statute 8-30J and whereas the program is an opportunity to receive a maximum of $15 million and whereas the town is obligated by state statute to produce a plan prior to 2022 and whereas the town staff recommends undertaking a proactive planning process to establish a strategy for meeting the housing needs of existing and future residents of town. Now, therefore, it be resolved that town council authorizes town manager John Burr or his authorized representative to submit an application to the State Department of Housing for the Affordable Housing Plan Technical Assistant Grant. I so move. Second. Mr. Burt, um, could you just verify the dollar amount on that, please? Hold on a sec. Uh, John Reiner is here. I'll let John Reiner verify. Mr. Reiner, could you uh, the, verify the dollar amount, please? It's fifteen thousand dollars. Councillor Franco, would you like to adjust your motion? Can I just say that there's an additional zero then after the peer, the de, um, decimal? <laughs> I have three zeros after the decimal. I thought it was a comma. So it's fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Moved by Franco. Is there a second? Seconded by Bordelon. Seconded by Bordelon. Thank you. And I see no hands. So we will vote on 2021-89 Affordable Housing Plan Grant um, to receive a maximum of $15,000. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. Thank you. And that is all the items on the agenda. So we are at other business. May I ask a quick question? Can we just take up the town attorneys? I mean, it, it was sent out in an email by Lisa. I mean, we've, it's already gone through cow. No information has changed from it. It's just a standard practice of reappointing them. You know, they're the bond council and the uh, school attorneys, that type of thing. And it did go through Kyle. We discussed it there. I think so, it'd be fine. We have we uh, have we need the to, information in our heads. Well, we need to have the resolution, and Mr. Burt cannot read it. So oh, uh, I okay. I have it in front Lisa, of me as well. Lisa just resent it to everyone. Okay, let me get let me get in there. Okay, great. Scrolling and scrolling. Juan, do you have that one? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I've got it if you want me to read it. Uh, let's give everybody a chance to get there, please. All right. Does anybody need a minute? Are we comfortable? 
Okay, I'm not seeing any objection. Councilor, if you'd like to go ahead, please. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, I will make a motion uh, resolution appointing re other attorneys as recommended by the town attorney. Where's the town Do you need one second, Councillor Heed? There's, I'm hearing um, conversation in the background. Okay. Uh, would you would you go again, please? Thank you. Make a, a, a motion uh, to pass resolution appointing other attorneys as recommended by the town attorney. Whereas the town charter at 8.2.2 provides that the town attorney may, with the approval of the town council, appoint attorneys to perform specialized services or assist to assist the town attorney. And whereas the town attorney is empowered by the charter to amend the terms of employment of such attorneys, therefore, be it resolved that pursuant to the recommendation of town attorney Dugan, the following attorneys may be appointed and continue to serve in the assignments indicated under terms prescribed by the town attorney until such time as the replacements may be approved by the town council, board of education attorneys from Beckham, Moses, and Devlin. Um, do I need to read all the names? Yes, please. All right, uh, Floyd Dugas, Paula Anthony, Eric Barba, John Khalil, Jennifer Jasinski, Rebecca Goldberg, Michelle Loban, Chris Sugar, Christine Sullivan, bond council from Day Pitney LLP, Judith Blank, Doug Gillette, uh, Namita Shah, Richard Wasserman, Glenn Breibaki, uh, Emily Kagan, Kristen Burgess. Uh, I so move. Thank you, Councillor Heed. Is there a second? Second. second. Franco. Moved by Heed and seconded by Franco. Any discussion on the appointment of the attorneys? And as you all stated, we've discussed this before in Committee of the Whole. Seeing none, all those in favor of 2020 161 appointment of other attorneys, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, so moved unanimously. So now we are at other business. Do any counselors have other business that they'd like to raise? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, Parker. Moved by Baumgartner and seconded by Parker. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, so moved unanimously. We are adjourned at 831. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Burt. Thank you for town staff for being with us. And thank you, Mr. Greeley. Be mm -hmm. safe and keep your distance, people.